Right, this video is on the objective, calculate and interpret the confidence interval for a population proportion. Right, and this is number two. This is the second video on a question related to this objective that I'm doing. Um, so if you've already seen the first one, you know, I'm just going to go through and use those formulas again. I'm not going to do as much of a description. Um, so hopefully this doesn't take as long. Um, all right, so here's the question. Now again, if you're unfamiliar with the topic, please click on more instruction and see how they're doing things. All right, look at their notes, their videos, their examples. All right, so here, suppose 260 randomly selected people are surveyed to determine whether or not they took a college entrance exam. Of the 260 surveyed, 205 reported taking a college entrance exam. So we're asked to identify the values needed to calculate a confidence interval at the 95% confidence level, and then find the confidence interval, right? So the confidence interval for the, the population proportion, right? We don't know what proportion of all people, right? The population took the centrist exam. We only know about these 260. So let me start writing down the information that we have. So I was given the sample size, right? They said that um, the sample size was 260. Uh, a success here is having taken a college entrance exam. So remember, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm typically letting this X represent the number of successes. And of these 260 people, you know, 205 of them said they took a, a college entrance exam. So the, the sample proportion, which is, you know, P hat or P prime, you might see either one. The sample proportion then is, uh, you know, what proportion of this sample took a college exam, entrance exam, and that's uh, 205 out of the 260. And this is actually one of the values being asked for by the question. They're asking us to round these to three decimal places. So let me take 205 divided by 260 to three decimal places would be 0 0.788. So almost 79% of the sample took a college entrance exam. Now, remember the central limit theorem for proportions. Now, if we were to look at all possible samples of size 260 and their, all their p hats or their p primes, by the central limit theorem for proportions, right, the distribution for those p hats or those p primes would be a normal distribution with a mean of, you know, mu sub p prime, a standard deviation of sigma p prime, where the mean, right, mu p prime, is the proportion of the population. What what percentage of the population took, uh, all people took a college entrance exam? This, this is not known, though. Right, this is unknown. So what we do is we use our point estimate which is this thing. All right. Okay, so we're using our point estimate, p hat, p prime, to approximate p and use that as our, you know, our mean for this distribution of the, of the sample proportions. So, you know, 0.788 here. And the standard deviation of these sample proportions, you know, is the square root of p times one minus p divided by n. But again, I don't, I don't know p. We're we're going to be guessing p. You know, creating a confidence interval around p. So again, we use our point estimate. And so we're approximating this with the square root of you know. P is replaced by P prime, you know, point, point 0.788 times 1 minus 0 0.788, which would be 0 0.212, and then divided by the sample size right, for all 
the samples for this distribution of the piezo. The sample size was 260. And again, this is another value that's uh, being asked for. So I round this to three decimal places as well. Now, in fact, I'm going to leave this. You know, I know I rounded it to 0.788. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And I'll go to square root, just to be a little more accurate. The square root of this answer times, you know, and then in parentheses, 1 minus this answer. And then all of that divided by 260, right? And just make sure that's all inside the square root. And to three decimal places, this rounds to you know, 0.025 for our standard deviation, our standard error of these sample proportions. Right? So we have our our point estimate, you know, which is going to approximate the mean of the sample proportions distribution, and we have our approximation our, our, of our standard error for the proportions distribution. Now we have a, I'll draw a little picture of this distribution. So again, here's possible different values of P prime for samples of size 260. So that was normally distributed, right? So I got a my best, you know, my best symmetrical bell shape there. Underneath the peak on this number line is our value of P, right? The population proportion, but again, we don't know this, so we're using our point estimate, our P prime, 0.788. Now we are asked to create a 95% confidence interval. So we have 95% confidence level. Now what does that mean? Remember that means that I'm going to take from the middle here, I'm going to add, add a margin of error. Now, I don't know what the margin of error is yet, but so here's 0.788 plus, you know, ME plus some margin of error. And I'll also subtract from the middle this same margin of error. So 0.788 minus the margin of error. I'm going to find out what the margin of error needs to be so that the area in between them under this curve, under this normal curve here, is 95%, our, our confidence level. All right. so, so how do we calculate the margin of error? And we saw this in the first video on these problems. Well, the margin of error is you know, some distance from the middle. It's, you know, the, the distance from the middle to the top of the interval and also the distance from the middle to the bottom of the interval is this margin of error. So what I would like to do is first figure out how many standard deviations away from the middle do I need to go? And that's, that's a Z score. So I need to find this Z alpha over two and then times, you know, the standard deviation for P, the P primes, right? Or Again, the formula one more time here is z alpha over 2, this z score times the square root of, you know, p prime times 1 minus p prime divided by n, right? We used p prime instead of p because we don't know p. Right? And this was our formula in general for the margin of error when I'm trying to estimate a population proportion, when I'm trying to create these confidence intervals. Now, what is this alpha and what is this alpha over 2 that I'm looking for? Remember, the area between these is, al uh, is the confidence level. The area left over is called alpha. Right? And that's also called the significance level, but don't worry about that right now. So alpha is 5%, right? The remaining 5% or 0.05. So that means the area above this upper value is 2.5%, right? And the area below this value, this lower value in the interval is 2.5%. That's the alpha over 2. Right, is 2.5 percent or 0 0.025 so that's what we're looking for that kind of z-score we want to find the z-score with you know a subscript of 0 0.025 that's what z-score has two and a half percent above it you know the, the z-score for this value up here this upper value that has two and a half percent above it and this will just tell me how many standard deviations away from the mean this upper value is and how many standard deviations below the mean this lower value is. All right, now you can find this in a couple ways, you know, one with a chart, 
So you look at the chart they gave us here, and we're looking for the Z score with 2.5% above it with that subscript of 0 0.025, and that was this one here with 1.960. 1 1.960, or just 1.96. Um, so again, what this means is that this upper value of the interval is 1.96 standard deviations above the mean. And this value here, the lower value of the interval, is 1.96 standard deviations below the mean. Now you could have also found this with that inverse norm on your calculator. If you go, uh, uh, because I'm going to be using this standard deviation, right? This is the standard deviation, the last thing I put up here, this 0.025. Uh, I'm going to store this as x just because I know I'm going to be using it some more. So now every time I type x, it'll be the standard deviation for the p primes for, the, uh, for those sample proportions. All right, so if I want to find this z-score with, you know, 2.5% above it, I can go second, distributions, and then to that inverse norm. And if I, if I want the z-score with 2.5% above it, remember this area you have to enter here is area to the left, area below. So if you have 2.5% above, it means you have 97.5% below. So I enter 0.975 there. And then mean zero standard deviation one, See, 1.9599, 1.96. If you were to round that to three decimal places, 1.960. So you can find it either way with a chart, with a table, or you know, with a, with a calculator. All right, so now I can find this margin of error. All right, so the margin of error for my confidence interval is going to be 1.960 times this standard deviation. All right now we already found that that was up here. The standard deviation of the p primes of these sample proportions was you know, about 0 0.025, and to three decimal places, right? So again, uh, now again, I'm just going to keep this the way it is. Ah, you know what? No, what? No, what? No, what? I'm just going to—I'll do 1.96. I'll use the value they gave me on the chart. So 1.960 times, and then you know my standard deviation I called x, right? This 0 0.025, and it's approximately. Now, 0 0.0496 to three decimal places would go 0 0.050. There's the margin of error. And now putting this all together, we get our confidence interval, our 95% confidence interval estimate of P, right? our estimate of the population proportion, you know, what percentage of the population all people took this, took a college entrance exam. All right, so our 95% confidence interval uh, for P, again the low value would be this mean here. Uh, sorry, not the the middle. Right? That was at 0 0.788. That was at P prime, our point estimate. Now, uh, again, because I'm going to use this value multiple times, I'll just store it as x again. And now, every time I use x, it's the margin of error. Now, every time I use x, it's the margin of error. Uh, so I'm going to take uh, 205 out of 260, right, our point estimate, and subtract our margin of error, subtract x. So the low end is 0 0.739. If I round to three decimal places like they're asking. And then just enter the same thing again, but change the minus to a plus, right? This will be the, the point estimate plus the margin of error. And our upper end is at 0 0.838. And there's our 95% confidence interval estimate for P. So we'd be saying, based on this sample, that we're 95% confident that the proportion of the entire population that has taken this college entrance exam, some sort of college entrance exam, is somewhere between 73.9% and 83.8%. Now let's look back at the website here. Um, look at what they're asking us for. First, they want p prime, right? That was that sample proportion, the 205 out of 260, and to three decimal places, that's 0 0.788. The standard deviation of the p primes, the standard error of those sample proportions, when we rounded, you know, that was that square root of p prime times one minus p prime divided by 260. Uh, when we rounded that to three decimal places, that was 0 0.025. 
the Z score used, right? the Z alpha over T, that Z score was the 1.960, that Z with the 0 0.025 subscript, 1.960. And then finally, the confidence interval. Our low end was 0 0.739, and our high end was 0 0.838. Now I'm hoping I didn't go too accurate, because you know, I think they might want you to use these values, but let's see what happens. Right? Yeah, wonderful. And again, please, you know, read through the answer explanations. Yeah, see, all right, so I was only off by a thought, but it looks like there's some sort of tolerance because they, they say it's 0.837, I put 0.83. It looks like they're allowing you to be within a thousand, within one thousandth here. Mine is technically more accurate because I wasn't rounding the entire time I was there. Um, but yeah, so they go through the calculations, show you how to find the margin of error and all that stuff again, and then how to construct a confidence interval estimate right, for the population proportion. And you notice how very, very similar this is to a confidence interval when you're estimating a mean, right, when you estimated mu. Uh, the only difference is how you calculate the standard deviation, right, how you calculate this sigma p prime is, is different than how the standard deviation was calculated for x bars, right, for the for the sample means. All right, so that's it for this particular question. Um, another one uh, that's related to that objective. Hopefully, it helps you when you're working on it on your own. And uh, thank you very much for watching.